Hello everyone, I'm so very excited to announce that today I'm bringing back the Wiffle Statement Podcast, Season 2, new intro, and I got some new exciting news for you. Not only will the podcast be uploaded as a video on YouTube in video form, but the podcast has really, really expanded. It's now what I originally really wanted to be. It is now on Spotify and Apple Podcast. Um, there's some others uh, that I'm not uh, super familiar with that I've been able to distribute it to, but um, I have those down in the description below if you're watching this on YouTube. And uh, definitely go check them out, but the two big ones are Spotify and Apple Podcasts, so it is actually out there in audio form, so you can listen to it on your favorite podcast site. So today, in the first episode of Season 2, I'm going to be joined by Zach Purock. I'm sure all of you MLW fans listening are already familiar with him, but in case you aren't, Zach burst into the MLW Wiffle Ball League in 2018, looking to breathe new life into the Wildcats franchise. And along with Ryan Kelly and Kyle Schultz, that's exactly what happened as the Cats went on to win it all in 2018. Besides having a spectacular performance in that World Series, including a walk-off hit and a sports-centered top 10 catch, Zach also took home the 2018 Rookie of the Year Award, and today he is going to join me on the Wiffle Statement Podcast. Let's get Season 2, Episode 1, rolling. Zach, how are you doing, man? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing just fine. You know, when I was originally planning, you know, thinking about who I would want on the podcast for this season, um, you were instantly the first person that popped in my mind for MLW, not just because of, you know, the rookie season and all that, but also I've seen your uh, interviews with players and whatever, and (laughs) you seem to have a great propensity for talking. So I'm very happy to have you here. It's funny you mentioned the interviews. That's something I was always in Kyle's ear, like, Kyle, let me do the interviews. Kyle, let me do the interviews. So I'm glad, uh, I'm glad some of the fans appreciated them. Yes, you definitely did a spectacular job. And that kind of leads into my first question, because I'm really curious of um, what your relationship was with Kyle, or if he, even if he was the one that really got you into the league. What was, like, what was your relationship with really the wiffle ball and you know, the people involved in MLW before you got involved this year? So Tommy Coughlin on the Mallards is one of my best friends. Very, very great kid and love spending time with him. So in the summers, I play baseball with him. And he'd always be talking about wiffle ball games and wiffle ball games. And so one, one day I asked him, I'm like, Tommy, I want to go I want to go just play a wiffle ball game with you. I want to see what it's all about. And so that day, I went and I played with uh, Tommy and then both the Schultz brothers. And so that was kind of my first experience. And I actually hit, I got no hits, struck out a zillion times, and hit one home run off Kyle, and somehow showed Kyle a reason to put me on his team uh, this year. So that was really cool, and kind of a weird way to enter the league, so it's all thanks to Tommy. Wow, interesting. And then you ironically got to play him in the World Series this year. (laughs) Yeah, that was very funny, and especially because we were bantering all week before the game, and during the season we were bantering, so it was... uh, it was cool to play him. I got you. And I got no, you. And no, uh, uh, another friend of Tommy's who I'd actually met before I joined the league. So. Noah Dabrico. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. So you mentioned, you know, when y'all played that first game, was that back in 2017 then? Yes, that was the summer of 2017, and that was still at the field in Kyle's front yard. So if you remember the old field with a big, uh, big tree in center field, it was, uh, it was cool to play there before it got moved. Right, I I bet it was cool to see that and transitioning to the Meadows for sure. So then in 2018, you were able to come into the league and you put together, I would think, probably the most exciting possible rookie season that you could have. I mean, obviously, everybody saw the World Series. You had the walk-off hit in Game 3. You were the diving in to be the winning run in that absolutely crazy game run. Uh, You even made it on SportsCenter with that home run robbing catch. So I'm just curious, out out of the whole year, you know, what was your favorite moment? What stands out you to you the most? It was definitely the robbing catch because it was funny. I'd all, I'd always explain to all my friends I'm playing in this wolf ball league. They never really understood the level of play until I was on Sports Center, and then they went back and watched all the videos, and they're like, "Whoa, this is serious!" So it was cool to kind of be be like recognized for you know the whole season. And other than that, like the walk-off hit the World Series was big, 
because I know I really Kyle had an excellent series, an excellent season in general, and so I wanted to make sure like I contributed to our World Series win. So that was another good moment. So kind of those two things combined. Yes, definitely. I mean, it was absolutely wild. I think for everybody to see that catch on Sports Center, it's great to see you know wiffle ball as, as a sport you know get that kind of recognition. Because like you said, it's one thing to be able to watch, you know, videos on YouTube, but being on Sports Center, it's really, you know, an institution. Yeah, I agree. It's super cool, and especially because Wolf Ball is such an exciting game that, like, I feel like it's part of every kid's childhood, or at least every baseball player's childhood. So seeing it on Sports Center, I feel like it's relatable to everybody. Definitely. And speaking of, you know, YouTube and, you you know, growing up with Wolf Ball as a kid's game, had you ever seen, you know, MLW's videos? So did you kind of have that frame of reference or not so much? I'd only have that frame of reference only through Tommy because Tommy would, uh, he'd show me the highlights of his game or he'd say, hey, I pitched this game, go watch it. So only through that and uh, not much exposure other than, like, watching how to throw certain pitches when I was younger, you know, trying to dice the kids up in the backyard, but that was about it. Right, right. And I mean, one thing that I'm always curious about when, um, like, I always talk to this with friends that I, I have played baseball with, you know, in high school, and really transitioning to wiffle ball, and, you know, you can laugh, but when you really get into that box and you're trying to hit, you know, an ace caliber wiffle ball pitcher, it's a whole different animal than baseball, at least, you know, from my experience and people that I've talked to. You know, what were your takes on that, you know, kind of transitioning? Oh, 100%. It's funny. The day before I played my first wolf ball game, we were playing a University of Michigan committed pitcher. Great pitcher. I actually got lucky enough to get three hits off from that day. I'm going off that, that baseball game. I'm thinking, this wolf ball game should be cake compared to facing this excellent pitcher. Right. It was so hard. It was. It's just a world of difference. It, the depth perception is different, and especially the weight movement on the pitches. So it's, uh, it's super... I didn't appreciate that, I guess I could say. And it definitely took striking out a lot of times to uh, gain that appreciation. Right, right. And I think you definitely, you know, you showed, I mean, you know, not to be the, the guy bashing everyone, but opening against the Seahawks in your first series, and then, you know, having to face, you know, Daniel Schultz or Tommy Coughlin, you know, that was, I, I could see how that would be, you know, really hitting you to where like, oh, wow, this is not easy to hit. Yeah, exactly. And especially the way Tommy and Daniel, both their movement is just so, so different than a baseball. And I mean, they're both incredible pitchers. I still like going and watching the um, the kind of mixtapes that Kyle will post of just their pitches because it's just mesmerizing. It really is to see, you know, somebody who can have that variety of pitches and that movement and that consistency. Mm -hmm. Along with the control. Definitely, definitely. And, and I mean, one thing interesting for you is that you never... Like, you came into this year with, I would say, a bit of a fresh perspective because, you know, not only do we have the new f the, the new field, the new uh, distance from the rubber to the uh, plate, but you also had the switching to skinny bats. So I, did that allow you, you know, because you, I, I mean, I don't know how much you played before, but you kind of didn't have that uh, cane to lean on, if you will, of using, you know, bigger bats. No, for sure. And it was nice coming in kind of to the whole fresh... Uh fresh field and fresh bats because I know some of the veterans in the league talked about just the difference in the mount. I think it was it was a slight difference, nothing too much, but it affected both pitchers and hitters, and that was something for me, like, I can't imagine the game being any harder, so for them, I, uh, I feel for those guys. But it was, uh, yeah, it was a cool way to come in, and especially because everybody now, you know, has their skills so developed, the pitchers have refined their pitches so much. I, I got to see kind of the end result, if that makes sense, of the years and years of this league's development. Right. And that, I mean, that kind of was what I wanted to talk to you about. Another topic was about those veterans, um, you know, coming into the league as a baseball player and, you know, getting to meet all these guys. That had to be super exciting. And I'm just kind of curious, which teams, you know, did you enjoy playing against the most? You know, what were your thoughts on each, you know, kind of who is your favorite pitcher, you know, least favorite, you know, that kind of thing. My least favorite was definitely Tommy. <laughs> I'd say a tie between Tommy and Daniel, but it's funny because I loved playing both those teams, the Eagles and the Ballers, who were my two favorite teams to play because the games were just intense. Right. And it's, I also like playing the Seahawks because those guys just found a way to make the game a lot of fun. <laughs> so I'd say that those different teams were uh, kind of my favorite teams to play. Love the Predators. I mean, every every guy in the league, 
everybody's super genuine, super nice, and it makes the game super fun, but it's funny. As the game kind of goes on, things get more intense, everything gets a little quiet, everybody's like focusing up, so it's funny how uh, the dynamic shifts. Definitely, and I think that's something that, you know, people not familiar with the game really don't understand is just how competitive it can really be because it is, you know, it really all comes down to the pitcher and the hitter. It's such a duel, you know, throughout those three innings of play. Yeah, exactly. I know probably the tensest moment all year was after, I'm not sure if you remember, the Austin Ford home run off Kyle for the Ballards to get a game in our regular season series. Mm -hmm. It was just like that duel. You could feel it in the at-bats following that when we were, uh, we were trying to come back. So, yeah, I definitely know what you mean with the tension. Definitely. I'm sure you felt that, you know, hitting that walk-off in Game 3, and, he, and even that walk-off against the Predators. That, I, that, to me, was one of the best series of the year. I really enjoyed that battle. Yeah, I know the Predators, they made a big acquisition, and it really paid off for them. And so it was cool kind of seeing them rise to prominence in the league, I guess, and into a competing position. And so they, uh, those were always battles. Good pitchers on that team, too. Everybody in the league, except, I mean, sadly, the Seahawks, but most other teams in the league just had those pitching right. those pitching matchups that were incredible. Exactly. And, and, I mean, looking, so what are your thoughts, you know, looking forward? Because now, you know, you have a championship under your belt, you have, you know, an experienced team with the Wildcats, and you have a whole, you know, an entire year of experience. So, I don't know. I don't know what your relationship is with baseball right now, or you know, other athletics. But as for wiffle ball, what are you looking forward to in the future? So now that I'm retired from all other pursuits, I'm just excited about focusing on wiffle ball in the future. I know me, I, Ryan, Kyle, we're all excited for what's to come next year. I know Ryan and I really started to catch stride at the end of the season, and so we're excited to kind of pick that up and continue that momentum. And looking forward to just having trying to take like the the championship and bringing the wildcats to prominence in the league gotcha i would definitely say you know i think all the wildcats fans you know you had you know 2016 2017 were both heartbreaking seasons and then you know coming into 2018 kyle was still the only you know veteran still remaining on that team from the old years what, what was it like playing with him and somebody with that level of experience it was crazy because i don't think like Kyle just does everything in the game so well and it's so cool being around that sort of excellence in a sense right and in addition Kyle's just his involvement with the league I don't think a lot of people appreciate that like Kyle does so much so just being around that sort of passion is it's awesome right I I think that's something that you know unless you're really you know you know, once you get more serious into wiffle ball, you realize that, you know, it's not just mess, you know, it can be, but it's not just messing around in your backyard. There is a level of, you know, seriousness and professional aesthetic to it that you have to keep up. I think that's, you know, something awesome that you can appreciate. Yeah, I agree. And Kyle exemplifies all those qualities. So it's, uh, he's a great leader for the league, to say the least. Definitely. And I mean, 2018 was such an exciting year for the league. You know, you had, of course, the new field, the subscribership on YouTube, and it, actually all platforms grew a lot. You know, the sponsorship with Baseball Lifestyle, it was just really exciting to see. Um, I'm just curious in the future, I am i wasn't able to keep up that much with the public tournaments that MLW hosted, but are you planning on playing in those in the future? Depending on time, I would love to play in a few. Sadly, last summer, work kind of interfered. So I, was, uh, I wasn't able to. But in the future, I'd love to. I'd love to go down to uh, Spanish, Ohio, play maybe in the Cedar Point Tournament, and a few others of those because it's really cool. I know I love seeing the pictures of Tommy and Kyle and the guys interacting with the whole community. And I think that's a really great thing, so I'd love to be a part of that. I'm sure all the fans there would love to see you too. <laughs> yeah, I would, uh, I'd like to meet. Maybe, maybe if I have a few fans out there, I'd like to meet them. <laughs> well, I, that kind of uh, leads me perfectly into one of my last questions. And... I'm just curious, you know, it's when you're, you know, when you're at home, you know, watching videos on YouTube or, you know, like you're in your situation where you never really played before, but you have somebody, you know, talking to you and telling you about the game of wiffle ball. What would you say to people out there listening that, you know, may be interested in wiffle ball, but haven't really, you know, gotten their own league going or haven't made the leap to play in other more professional leagues? What, what would you say to them to kind of, you know, break that uh, nervousness a little bit? I would say to them, 
no, especially the guys looking to maybe go try and play in a more professional league, it can't hurt to try. The worst thing is you're going to strike out in, as a hitter. And in wiffle ball, even the best players are striking out a decent percentage of the time. So there's no risk. And it's playing at that level brings so much more joy and passion and fun to the game. I think it's just a great thing to be involved in. So I really encourage them. I was nervous my first game. Everybody's nervous every game. <laughs> so just kind of try to take some of those nerves out of it and see, see more of the passion aspect, the fun aspect. Right, right. I mean, it is at its core a, a really fun game. I'm, I'm sure, you know, the competi- you know everybody loves the competitiveness, but, you know, one, one thing that I would love to see in MLW series in person is to see, you know, the bantering or just how much, you know, it, it, how much fun it is at that, you know, intimate level of being on the field. Oh, no doubt. And especially, you see that in, like, in the All-Star game, too, when the stakes aren't quite as high and the banter between players and during the home run derby, it's, it's a great time. It's, uh, and that's something that you can't really communicate as much through the video because you have to keep it professional, as you mentioned. Right. But it's, uh, it's definitely it's something to look forward to every, every series. Right. And I'm sure you and everybody is especially looking forward to the 2019 season. Do I have a firm commitment for a Wildcats repeat championship from Zach yes, Kurok? Yes, <laughs> Well, awesome. Thank you, Zach. That's going to really wrap it up for all the questions. Um it was great having you on the show. Um, really appreciate your analysis, just being able to talk about, you know, that kind of atmosphere and, you know, really the, just the pure experience of playing in MLW. I cannot wait to see, you know, where the league goes from here. Um, do you want? Do you have anything you want to say before we close this one out? Just want to thank you for having me on. It was uh, it was fun being able to maybe look back on my first year and uh, excited for you too. Wildcats are going to be back to back champs. <laughs> well, that is going to do it. I hope the best of luck in the 2019 season. I'm sure everybody listening will definitely be watching. Zach Purock, thank you so much for joining this uh, the podcast for the first episode of season two. If you guys want to check out more from MLW, I'm sure you all know the drill. You know, I'm sure all of you watch them anyway, but definitely go watch them on YouTube. And if you're not, following them on their other social media accounts like Facebook and Instagram, etc. If you want to see more from the podcast, it is now available on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, like I said in the beginning. So definitely go check that out. Hope you guys have an awesome day, and I will be talking to you soon. Goodbye.